Hey guys, Richard Blaine here. Thanks for stopping by my Easy Cooking channel tonight. Well, obviously you can see that I'm not wearing my chef's jacket, so obviously that means I'm not cooking tonight. And I'm not. I promised a friend of mine, a guy named Brent Harp, a custom knife maker in California, that I would sharpen one of his knives. And the reason I'm doing this is because Brent Harp was a protege, is and was a protege of the late great Bob Robert Loveless, okay, an innovator in the cutlery industry, okay, and this is one of his knives. This is a three inch fixed blade hunter, okay. Now, this knife retails for $500, and the reason I'm sharpening this knife is because I have many $500 knives in my collection that I actually use. There are a lot of guys out there that'll buy a $500 knife and uh, use it and rely on somebody else at the local knife shop to sharpen it for them when, in my opinion, I feel they should be able to do it themselves. So tonight, I'm going to sharpen this Brent Harp 3-inch fixed blade hunter. I'm going to use my technique. So let's get going. And as usual with YouTube, 15 minutes and I'll see you on the other side. Okay guys, so let me explain something about this knife. This knife, as I said, is made in the tradition of Bob Loveless knives. Brent, my friend Brent Harp, okay, is and was a protege of Bob Loveless for 25 years. So naturally he makes his knives in the tradition of Bob Loveless, okay, tapered dovetail, spacer foiling between the tang and the grips to fill in empty space. Japanese ATS-34 steel tempered at 5860. A very good temper for a field knife, all right? A half guard. Bob Loveless didn't really do anything unless it had a half guard, okay? And he gave me this knife because he wanted to see my hand style sharpening technique, and that's what I'm gonna do here. Now, let me tell you, are Brent Harp knives in demand? Oh yes they are. He just fulfilled a contract for 41 of these fixed blade hunters, 3 inch, at $500 a piece. That's $20,500. So is he in demand? Oh yes he is. Okay, He's been in Blade Magazine, Easy Rider Magazine, and numerous other magazines. And the thing I like about Brent besides the fact that he's been a customer at my shop for 15 years, is that this is a guy who knows what he's doing because he's done it. He was a combat marine, and he was a police detective in the state of California for years and years. This is a guy who knows about knives, knows about guns. This isn't just some guy that says, oh yeah, I'm going to make knives and sell them for a fortune. Okay, this guy knows what he's doing. So... We're going to move forward and I'm going to sharpen this $500 custom knife. And what I'm going to do is, it's dull. I mean, I'm running my fingers on it. You can see it's not cutting, okay? If I press really, really super hard, it'll bust my skin. But if you can see, okay, I'm pushing into the skin. It's dull, okay? But it's not so dull that I have to use a super aggressive grit. I'm going to start at 325 okay now some of my subs and my viewers they say you know what ever since I've been watching your videos my knives have gotten really sharp but not as sharp as your knives what am I doing wrong well it could be a matter of technique now I've shown you that doing the Japanese stroke you would lay the knife down raise it up and push forward until the knife bites the stone and then you lay it back a degree or two, and you scrub, okay, you grind. Well, it's the same thing with the Western grind, okay? You lay the knife down, you raise it up, you travel along the stone, raising it until it stops. There's the angle. You release it down about one or two degrees, and there you are, okay? Your angle. Now, there's two things you need to know. Whether you're doing the Japanese stroke Okay, or the western stroke, okay? The idea is to get both sides of the blade to cross center. 
Now doing the Japanese stroke, you'll grind on one side until you feel that wire edge here. That means one side is cross center. And then you'll turn it over and you'll scrub here until you feel a wire edge here. That means that both sides have crossed center and when you get rid of the burr, you have a hard edge. That's fine. Now, if you sharpen the knife using the western stroke like I'm doing here, going one at a time, one at a time, that's okay. You might not ever develop the burr on each side, but the fact of the matter is, is that as time goes by, both sides will cross center, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start this knife at 325 grit, okay, on a DMT blue, and I'm gonna work this for about five or 10 minutes, maybe a little longer, it's pretty dull, okay? And we're gonna get going. Now, one thing to be aware of, okay? is that you don't need to use a lot of pressure. And with the pressure that you do use, if you use more pressure on one side than you do on the other, then you are going to roll the edge. So a lot of my guys, a lot of my readers, a lot of my subs, okay, they ask me what's going on. And so if, if you put more pressure here, going from the right to the left stroke, and less pressure here, going from the left to the right stroke, then you're rolling the edge, okay? So if you're pressing down here, this edge is rolling up, and then less pressure here, you have an edge that's like this. So you have to be very mindful of the pressure that you incorporate when you're sharpening knives. You want the pressure to be equal on both sides to be able to keep the edge straight. So I'm gonna work this knife on the 325, and then we're going to move on to the 600. Okay guys, so I've been working the knife on 325 for about 25 minutes. And what you're looking for, if you can see the blade, is a nice even scratch pattern. See that? Get the light on there. Nice even scratch pattern all the way across the blade. See that? Okay, now, this is a 600 grit, okay? And I find my angle, and then I come down a couple of degrees, and I start to stroke, okay? Now, I'm gonna work this knife at 600. Remember, the pressure has to be consistent. If you push too hard going left to right, and not so hard going right to left, you roll the blade. So part of the issue of sharpening is consistent pressure in both directions, okay? So I'm going to work this knife on the 600 grit, 10 minutes, maybe 15, and then we're going to move on to 1200. Nice, even strokes. Okay guys, so here we are. I've been working at 600, and if you can see the edge, okay, get the letter, it's a nice even scratch, okay? That's at 600. Now, I'm going to 1200, okay? The same thing applies, the pressure. Watch the pressure, okay? This knife, is designed for cutting and skinning. It's not meant to be a sashimi knife. It's not meant to shave your face, although I could make it do so if I wanted to up the bevel a little bit. But right now, I'm gonna work it at 1200 grit, and then we'll move forward. All right, guys, so I finished working at 1200, and you can still see that nice, even bevel all the way across, indicative of hand control, and now I'm going to take this edge 
to an 1800 grit synthetic ceramic spider coat and I'm going to polish it down. Then I'm going to move to about a 2200 grit and then I'm going to go to my famous surgical black Arkansas. I'll see you guys in a little bit. I just finished working the blade on an 800, uh, 1800 grit ceramic. Can you see that high polish? All right. Now I'm going to go to work. <clears throat> excuse me. I'm going to go to work on a 2200 grit, and then I'm going to finish up on my surgical black Arkansas and Brent Harp's custom three inch hunter will be just as sharp by my hand as it was when it came out of his custom shop. And besides, this is what he wanted to see. He wanted to see how I do it. And I told him, I do it strictly by hand. Okay? Now, custom guys do a mixture of machine and hand, and that's okay. They know what they're doing. I do strictly hand. I know what I'm doing. And he just wanted me to sharpen one of his knives. And I am more than happy to do it. I've known Brent 15 years. He's a great guy. I'm more than happy to do this. So I'm going to work this blade on the 2200 and I'll be back soon. Okay guys, finishing touches. I'm going to get to work on this 4000 grit Arkansas. Well actually, Arkansas stones are rated in density. The equivalent density or the equivalent grit to the density of this black Arkansas is about 4,000. Can you see that mirror polish? Okay, that is strictly by hand, no gadgets. And I'm going to get to work on this surgical black Arkansas. Maybe five minutes, then the knife will be done. Now, I know a lot of my subs don't like it when I chip away at my fingernail, but they don't mind the hair. So just to let you see, okay, and I'm cutting on the opposite arm, okay, because all the hair on my right arm is gone, okay. Now I've sharpened this at about a 20 degree angle, okay, suitable enough for skinning out in the field, okay. Yeah. I have just a little bit of hair left here, okay? That's all. It's just hair, okay? Now, I know you guys don't like seeing this, so I'm only going to do it lightly. And that's okay, okay? And like I usually do, paper feathers. And as I usually do, okay, paper feathers. Nice, thin cuts, okay? Okay? It's a small knife, okay, so. But this knife will cut all day long. This knife will cut all day long. small blade so it's not going to travel through the paper like my larger knives do when I sharpen them because it's a short blade. But there it is guys, Brent Harp's 3 inch Hunter, ATS 34, 5860 Rockwell, razor sharp, ready to go. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video.